I'm Christy Cashman, and this is Backstory. Susanna Kaysen is the author of two novels and two memoirs, one of which was adapted and became one of the most powerful films of the decade. I'm talking about Girl Interrupted. How did your memoir become a major motion picture starring some of the most renowned actresses in Hollywood, Winona Ryder, Angelina Jolie, Whoopi Goldberg, Vanessa Redgrave? <laughs> did you expect it? <laughs> no. <laughs> I had trouble getting the book published. So no I kidding. certainly didn't expect it. But I know that the book was very important to Winona mm -hmm. and that she was urging someone to buy it and to make it and that she wanted to play me or the part of Susanna. Mm -hmm. And I think that without her interest and in, uh, really fascination or obsession, you could call it, it would not have gotten made. Angelina Jolie won an Oscar. And how do you feel about her portrayal of the real Lisa? Well, I thought she was a little over the top, but Lisa was over the top, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't a nonsensical way of playing it. But I, I thought it was a bit of a histrionic performance. On the other hand, people like that. Can I have a vanilla sundae with hot fudge? Okay. And uh, whipped cream, cherries, and uh... nuts. <laughs> So did you feel as though um, what they did with the film was so shaken up that it was somewhat unrecognizable um, to what you created, or was it shaken up and just done differently? Well, both. I, I mean, I, f I felt some of it was unrecognizable, and I wasn't surprised by that because I, when I looked at the book, when they first bought it, I thought, how are they going to make a movie out of this book? It's not mm -hmm. a story. They'll have to do something to it. And whatever they're going to do to it, I won't like it. What would you have done differently? I wouldn't have made it into a movie. Really? I wrote a book. So I felt that, you know, when these big studios buy something, they give you a lot of money. And that money has bought my freedom. And now I can do, I can write whatever I want. Your book begins with the cab ride to McLean's, to mm -hmm. the psychiatric hospital. And you seem sort of unsure as to how or why you were going, and time feels a little bit mushy in that. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I guess the thing that I was trying to do when I was writing it was to, sh to not to differentiate any day from any other day because they were all the same day. It could have just been one big day for 18 months or 19 months or however long I was in there. It was always the same. The mm -hmm. same thing happened over and over again. So there was comfort in creating a schedule while mm -hmm. you were there. Yeah, yeah, a structure. It was an amorphous place to be. But isn't that what we're doing out here too? Just creating some yeah. silly schedule? Yeah, but you get to do what you want. Whereas there, if you, there are a lot of things you had to do. Um, the title Girl Interrupted is from a painting. Can you say a little bit more about that? This is a wonderful small painting by Vermeer that's in the Frick Museum in New York. And you named the memoir that because? Well, because I felt that this experience in which I was removed from life or re regular life, I was sort of involved in the loony bin life, but I was removed from regular life from 18 to uh, almost 20 was an interruption mm -hmm. of the normal course of life and at a at a time when one should be going out, I was going in. Your book has so many layers and it's so interesting. And I'm just so glad to be able to sit here and talk to you in person because who gets to do that? <laughs> well, who you. gets to do that? You get to I do know. It. And then and to you know see. what? I get to do it every day. I can talk to myself. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, do you think it was a bad thing that I related to all the characters in the book? Crazy. <laughs> Go check yourself in. <laughs> you chased a bottle of aspirin with a bottle of vodka. I had a headache. 